the rest of us, let's grab our Bibles and let's go to the book of Mark today. We're going to continue the Pray About It series and we're going to, um, uh, we're going to look at a kind of a different, a different type of scripture on this series. We've been focusing on the last few weeks on um, different aspects of prayer and uh, how to deal with prayers that don't seem like they're being answered. By, by the way, speaking of prayers, thank you to everyone who prayed for me this week. I was very much under the weather, and uh, it, was, uh, <laughs> it was not fun. And uh, big shout out to our associate pastor, uh, Nicole, who just was a champ uh, and uh, spoke even on Wednesday with about two hours notice or something like that. So big round of applause for her. She's amazing. <clears throat> yeah, she doesn't just do announcements. She could do it all. And so, and so I want to take us on a, yet another journey on the subject of, of prayer and, and praying about those things that uh, are of concern for us. And We've been talking about how, again, unanswered prayer. We've talked about when the church prays, uh, just a lot, of, a lot of different parts of this. Today, I want to focus from Mark chapter 2. Mark chapter 2, and the title of my message is Four Friends. Four Friends. I will tell you today that... Four unnamed friends, their actions changed a man's life forever. Four unnamed people, we have no idea who they are, but they changed, their actions caused a man's life to be changed forever. I want to challenge a bunch of maybe even unnamed friends in here, a bunch of people who have a big concern for somebody that's important to them. I want to challenge you to do what it takes today to bring their needs right to Jesus. I know we've talked a lot about praying for ourselves, and there's room for that. Even Jesus prayed for himself, right? But today my focus is going to be... is. <laughs> Sounds better than what I'm doing. <laughs> it's been one of those days. Holy cow. Oh, that's awesome. You kids and your toys. Anyway, uh, I want to focus today on praying for somebody who's important to us. And do what it takes to bring their situation and their need and their difficulty and their crisis to Jesus. And I got a feeling there's more than four friends in this place. They make a difference for eternity. Amen? Would you stand with me in honor of God's word? I will try not to preach long because, quite frankly, I don't know how much voice I have left. It's, uh, and I don't know if that's a prayer need. If you talk to my family, that might be a praise report. So, uh, but Mark chapter 2, beginning in verse 1. If you don't have your Bible, you can follow along on the screen. You ready? A few days later, when Jesus again entered Capernaum, the people heard that he had come home. They gathered in such large numbers that there was no room left, not even outside the door, and he preached the word to them. Some men came, bringing to him a paralyzed man, carried by four of them, four friends. And since they could not get him to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus by digging through it and then lowered the mat that the man was lying on. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralyzed man, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now some teachers of the law were sitting there thinking to themselves, why does this fellow talk like that? He's blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? And immediately Jesus knew in his spirit that this was what they were thinking in their hearts. And he said to them, why are you thinking these things? Which is easier to say to this paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up, 
take your mat and walk. But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the man, I tell you, get up, take your mat, and go home. He got up, he took his mat, and he walked out in full view of them all. This amazed everyone, and they praised God, saying, we have never seen anything like this. How can four unnamed friends change a person's life forever? I would submit that you have that opportunity beginning today. So let's pray. Jesus, would you walk with us as we journey in this scripture? And Lord, I pray that you would uh, move in our hearts, move in our lives, nudge us closer to you, and God, guide us in the way that we need. God, give us a burden for somebody that we could pray for. And Lord, I pray that you would use our prayers to change someone's life. And God, let us know that we can do that. So it's in your name that we pray all this and we ask you to go with us. In Jesus' name, and we all said amen. Amen. You may be seated. So you're going to see. Cell phones will not make the rapture. Did you all know that? Okay. <laughs> They will not. Neither will still guitars. Um, You're going to see this phrase over and over today. The actions of four unnamed friends changed a man's life forever. Now, let me just tell you right from the onset that I'm not suggesting that you need to start digging through the roof of the church while I'm preaching In fact, please don't, okay? (laughs) This roof is not that old. Um, But I'm wondering if we could look at the efforts that these four unnamed friends had and compare that to our prayer lives, specifically to how we pray for that person. And I don't know who that person is in your life. We'll get to that, but... I would tell you that I believe so much in prayer. (laughs) In fact, I believe the reason why I'm here today is because people have prayed for me. And some of you know exactly what I'm talking about. So I really believe that the actions of God's people can literally be used to change someone's life. So the question is, what, uh, what do we find in these four unnamed friends that caused this man on this mat, this paralyzed man, let's call him Matt. It's my brother's name, makes sense. <laughs> you have no idea. So what, what was it about this story that we can remember. Let me show you what I mean. Number one, the four friends had an incredible, incredibly high regard for this person. In other words, they cared enough, follow me here, they cared enough to bring Matt's situation directly to Jesus. Have you ever like, I don't know, kind of poured out your heart to somebody. And then they said, wow, I'm praying for you. And you knew. So I don't think you are, you know. And, and maybe we're all guilty of that. that. That almost becomes a point of punctuation in some of our Christian conversations. I'm praying for you, brother. And, and, and maybe we don't really mean it like we should, but I, I'm telling you, that powerful things happen when God's people pray. You know, again, look at the scripture, verses 1 through 3. A few days later, when Jesus again entered Capernaum, the people heard they'd come home. And they gathered in such large large numbers, there was no room left, not even outside the door. And he preached the word to them. And some men came, bringing to him a paralyzed man, carried by four of them. I will tell you that bearing the burdens 
of our loved ones is going to take work. I'll get to that in a bit. But who is it in your life that is right here, I mean, in your heart that you want to pray for? Could it be that family member who's far from God today? That person that you care about so much that is not serving Jesus right now? Could it be that coworker that you see every day who's struggling so bad and they're going through so much difficulty? Could it be that person? Could that be your mat? <laughs> Could it be students, a, a, a professor or a, another fellow student that you is, is hurting right now? Maybe they know Christ, but maybe uh, they're really hurting today. They're really struggling today. Who is it in your life that you could bring to the Lord? What we need is to be people with a huge burden to pray for somebody. There has to be, listen to me, there's got to be a person in your life that moves you to pray. There's got to be a person in your life that moves you to pray. And, and here's the deal. Well, the person I want to pray for, I don't really like them. In fact, maybe the person I want to pray for, I'd, I'd rather just see their tires slashed and for them to get leprosy. Not a good prayer. But I've said this a lot. It's hard to hate someone that you pray for. You know what prayer does? When I pray for somebody, that brings my heart closer to Jesus. And I begin to see that person like Jesus does. And the anger that I have towards somebody, if I'm praying for them, all of a sudden I'm not praying for revenge. I'm not praying for bad things to happen to them. All of a sudden, I get a heart for them. All of a sudden, it's like, how does this happen? That's one thing about prayer. See, prayer is not just about what God does for you. It's also what God does to you and through you and within you. That's what prayer does. And when we bring our, our, our loved ones, our coworkers, our, our friends to the Lord, we're, we're, we're saying, God, this person means a lot to me. And I'm going to pray for them until I see an answer. You know, Samuel said this to, uh, to, to the people of God. He said, as for me, far be it from me that I should sin against the Lord by failing to pray for you. That's what Samuel said. To a bunch of people that weren't the most faithful people in the world. To a bunch of people that probably gave him more face palm moments than anything else. But he said, far be it from me that I sin against the Lord. That's how deeply he held this in his heart for those people. Is there somebody in your life, a parent, a sibling, a friend, a neighbor, a coworker, somebody in your life that says, God, I really want to see a difference in their life. They had a huge regard. They had a huge level of concern for Matt. <laughs> Secondly, not only did they have an incredible regard for him, but thank you, but they had an incredible amount of resilience. Every point, I'll be drinking an entire bottle of water. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Now, I want you to check this out because I think this is important. Because here's the thing, okay? I could, I could stand up here on a Sunday morning and say, hey, everybody pray. And, and, and then we say a quick prayer, then we go to lunch. But that's not what I'm talking about today. I'm talking about praying and not giving up. Doing what it takes until the answer comes. Now, look at the obstacles that the four unnamed friends found themselves in in verse 4. You ready? Since they could not 
get him to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus by digging through it and then lowered the mat that the man was lying on. Okay, now, how many of you, this might have been you, okay? You and your three friends, you each got a corner of the mat and you're, you're carrying them. It's like, hang in there, Matt. We're going to get you to see Jesus. And as we get closer, it's like, wow, there's a lot of people there. And as you get closer, you can't even get in the door. In fact, you can't even sneak him through a window. What do you do? Oh, uh, I guess it's just not your time, Matt. I guess we'll have to try another time. I give up. I wonder which one of the four said, you know what we could do. We could climb the roof. Now that right there freaks me out, but that's another story altogether. I don't like roofs. We, we could climb a roof. No one's up there. We can kind of estimate where Jesus is. We'll just start digging. The guy in the opposite corner, like while he's speaking, yeah. Do, do you think that happened in a second? That took a little work. That took some creativity. That took some tenacity. That took some resilience. Now, I'm going to tell you that there are moments when you're praying for that person that you're concerned about, that it seems like there's an obstacle, that there's a roadblock to the answer coming. Like, just as the four friends saw that they could not get in the house, they could have just given up. Instead, they did everything they could to get that need to Jesus. Maybe you're frustrated today because you haven't seen the answer come. You've been carrying this mat for a long time. In fact, Matt's getting a little heavy. But you're going to keep going. You're going to keep going. I don't know if I'm making a difference. Keep going. Keep going. And, and maybe you just need to keep on praying. In fact, I would tell you that's exactly what you need to do. And I think for a lot of us, the reason why we don't see answers to our prayers is because we give up at the first sign of frustration. And that's easy to do. You know, God, bring a healing. Ugh, I still feel sick. God, provide this job. I'm still unemployed. God, work this out for me. It ain't working out. And, and the temptation is to just turn around, take your mat, and the heavy load that you're carrying and walk away. And some of you have walked away from the house. Some of you have walked away. Some of you have gotten frustrated. You didn't see the answer. So you stopped praying for that unsaved loved one. So you, you, you didn't see the answer. So you, you stopped praying for that healing to take place. Some of you, you're so frustrated that you, and you didn't see the answer. So you, you've taken the load that you were carrying and just you move that load as far from Jesus as you could. And the Lord would remind you today that he is still the way to, to go to him. He, 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 still has, he still has you in the palm of his hand. And it might take work. I'm going to tell you, praying for people that you love takes work. But we must never give up praying for the people that we care about. It might take a day. It might take a week. It might take a month. It might take a year. It might take several years, but don't give up. Don't give up. In fact, the book of Luke prefaces a, a whole parable that Jesus told in, in Luke 18 when it says, uh, hen Jesus, it should say then Jesus. Oh, well. 
never copy and paste when you're sick. Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give Prayer will do as much for you as it does for the person that you're praying for. Let me say that one more time. Prayer will do as much for you as it, is, as it does for the person that you're praying for. There's a strengthening that comes when we seek Jesus. Don't give up. Stay resilient. You keep on praying. Mom, you keep praying for that kid. God blesses mom prayers. I'm just going to tell you right now. God blesses the prayers of a parent. And grandma prayers, don't even try to mess with the grandma prayers. God, God hears. God hears when his people pray. Thirdly, and unfortunately, this is something we have to deal with sometimes. But thirdly, there was some resistance. There was some resistance. This man gets lowered. Now, I've preached in a lot of different situations. Uh, I've been on short-term missions trips. I bet Will and Abby can agree that sometimes you never know what's going to happen during a service when you're overseas. I had a cat come to the altar one time. Cat got saved. Cats need to get saved, by the way. And chihuahuas. And we baptized her. No. Um, so here's Jesus teaching in this house. And can, can you imagine? Can you imagine when the first bit of dirt, wood, materials started falling from the ceiling? What a commotion that's making. And this man gets lowered right in front of Jesus. And look at this. It says, when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralyzed man, son, your sins are forgiven. Now, some teachers of the law were sitting there thinking to themselves, why does this fellow talk like that? He's blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? And immediately Jesus knew in his spirit, that this is what they were thinking. By the way, God knows your thoughts. God knows your hearts. If you think you're hiding anything from Jesus, you are so wrong today. God knows everything that's going on in here. As crazy as it might be up there, he knows what's going on. And he goes, why are you thinking these things? Verse 9, which is easier to say to this paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up, take your mat, and walk. But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the man, I tell you, get up, take your mat, and go home. You know what's interesting? When you get serious in your prayer life, when you get serious about praying for somebody else, I promise you there will be somebody in your life that will have an opinion <laughs> And sometimes it's the most religious person you can think of. Why are you praying for him? They're not even like us. Why are you praying for her? Do you know what the kind of mistakes she's made in her life? Uh, that's exactly why I'm praying. Someone's always going to have an opinion. And there might be, there might be, Maybe well-intentioned, maybe not, but there might be somebody who's kind of churchy that might say, you know what, just, just give up on this. Just chalk this up as a, take an L. I've said, you know what, I, I, I'm just not wired that way. I don't, I don't take L's. I don't think anyone's a lost cause. You hear me. I don't think anybody is a lost cause. You're not a lost cause. Look where you are. Here you are. You might not have it all together yet. Most of us don't, but here you are. None of us is a lost cause. Don't give up like we said earlier, but someone's going to have an opinion. Someone's going to try to discourage you. 
Somebody might even claim that you didn't pray correctly. Did you profess that and confess that? If you name it, claim it, and then put it on a little frame it, (laughs) you'll get your blessing. And I'm like, what? I didn't even see that. But someone will have an opinion. Don't let the opinions of other people rob you of your victory. Don't let it happen. And they might even come off as being spiritual, but I promise you this, you are going to do no harm praying for anybody. (laughs) So one thing we need to do is pray. But we should not be shocked. Do not be shocked when we face resistance, when we pray. That's enough for some people to give up. Don't do it. I'm going to close with this, and that means absolutely nothing. Number four, there were some incredible results. Incredible results. What do we find here? Four unnamed friends brought their friend as close to Jesus as they possibly could through some unconventional means. And it took a lot of work. What was the result of that? Let me show you the result of what might happen when God's people refuse to quit and they will bring their loved one's needs to Jesus and keep doing it and keep doing it until they see the answer. Number one, there's mercy. Now, I, I read over it on purpose because I want to bring it out now. But verse 5 is profound. Look at verse 5. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralyzed man, Son, your sins are forgiven. Read that again. Just as I am was not playing in the background as the man was lowered on the ceiling. Jesus didn't say, if you came by bus, they'll wait for you. (laughs) Matt was not lowered from the ceiling reciting the sinner's prayer. But through the efforts of four unnamed friends, Their goal was for Matt to walk again. But Jesus was more concerned, first of all, with what was most important, the man's soul. Oh, are you getting this? When, when, when he came down the ceiling, through the ceiling, I would have expected Jesus to say, boom, you're healed. No. He forgave the man's sin, had an argument with the Pharisees, and then healed him. God is way more concerned about your character and who you are than your comfort and what you're going through. But I will tell you that your prayers can make a difference in someone's eternity. How do I know this? In Matthew chapter 9, Jesus is gathered with his disciples, and it says when he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were confused and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. He said to the disciples, the harvest is great, but the wor- and let's not advance it yet. The harvest is great, but the workers are few. Some of us would finish that sentence saying, now go get them. Here we go. Human video team, boom. Clown ministry, boom. Go, go, go. And oh, that's great. But Jesus said this first. So pray to the Lord 
who's in charge of the harvest and ask him to send more workers into his field. Before he told them to go, he told them to pray. He said, the harvest is ripe, so pray. Church, your loved one who doesn't know Jesus Christ yet, do not try to influence them without prayer. Pray. And pray that the Lord of the harvest would send workers into that harvest field. It might not be you. It might be a coworker. It might be another student. It might be another person on the team. It might be somebody in the gym. I don't know who it might be, but pray. Pray that God would do his work. There was mercy. And yes, verse 12, there was a miracle. There was a miracle. This paralyzed man, verse 12, tells us that he got up, he took his mat, and he walked out in full view of them all. I still believe that God does miracles. I still believe it. I've seen too much. I've seen God do too many great things. And I know that the prayers of a righteous man are powerful and they are effective. And Jonathan, if you can help me, I'm going to close with this. The last result was they marveled at what happened. I don't want you to miss this. Because when you pray for Matt, it might not just be about Matt. It might be about the people that are around Matt. Verse 12 says, This amazed everyone, and they praised God, saying, We have never seen anything like this. The answer to the efforts of four unnamed friends caused not only Matt to be healed, but it caused all the people to praise God and be marveled at the fact that God is doing something that I have never seen before. And that's exactly what Jesus can do in your loved one's situation. He saves that person. Could it be that the people that are around that person whose salvation you're praying for, could it be that the people around that person can say, wow, okay, this is more than just some guy going to church. This is legit. He's not doing drugs anymore. He's not, he's not a jerk anymore. God, he says God changed him. I believe it. See, it's not about you and it's not about Matt only. It, it's, it's also about the people that might see the wonders of God. Psalm chapter 40, verse 3. The psalmist says, he put a new song in my mouth. A hymn of praise to our God. Look at that last part. Many will see and fear the Lord and put their trust in him. My prayer, my prayer is that the burden that I'm carrying, when I get that burden to Jesus and I don't give up, not only will I see an answer to that loved one's burden that I've been carrying, and let's remind ourselves in Galatians, it tells us to bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Jesus Christ. So when we do that and when we see the answer, my prayer, my prayer is that, oh God, don't just make them comfortable. Don't just make them healthy. Don't just make them whatever. But God, I pray that many will see what you've done and they will put their trust in you. Oh, isn't that powerful? The actions of four unnamed friends changed a man's life forever. <laughs> 
Could it be that somebody in here, you could bend a knee and bow a head and pray? No, you're not digging through a roof, but you're making some noise. And you're saying, God, I pray for my dad. God, I pray for my child. Lord, I pray for that person that I'm in class with. God, I'm praying for a healing for that person that I care about. That list can go on and on and on. It could very well be different for every individual that's in this place. But who is your mat? And will you pray for him or her? today. And when you haven't seen the answer just yet, will you pray again tomorrow? And if you're a little tired because you're not seeing the results you want to see, will you pray again on Tuesday? Will you keep going on Wednesday? Thursday? Friday? Every day until you see the marvelous take place. The actions of four unnamed people changed a man's life forever. I firmly believe that the actions of prayer amongst the people that are in this room and those watching online can change somebody's life forever. Would you stand with me? Whew. really believe that God wants to work through some people's prayers today. I really do. So rather than climb a wall and get on a roof today, <laughs> please don't. Uh, but may maybe I can invite you to take maybe a less intrusive step or two or ten. M maybe you can walk from your seat and, and find a place to pray at this altar and say, God, this is my loved one's load that I am carrying. Lord, touch this person in Jesus' name. And, and you, you pray. And maybe you're not comfortable doing that. Maybe you'd rather pray at your seat. But would you, would you be willing, starting today, to pray for that burden of that loved one that you have and don't stop until you see the answer? I think today... I think today could chart a course for miracles, for lives to be saved, and testimonies to be made. So I'm going to pray. When I say amen, I want to invite you to maybe pray here at this front area. You can kneel. Maybe you want to kneel or sit at your seat, but let's, let's make this a house of prayer. And please, let's not interrupt anybody who's praying. So if you want a fellowship, let's do it in the lobby. But right now we're going to make this whole place a house of prayer. You ready? And let's see what Jesus does through a bunch of unnamed friends who are determined to see Jesus change a life. God, I'm asking you today that you would take our burdens and, 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 and take the load that we're carrying on behalf of somebody that we care about. And Lord, I'm asking you today that you would work through our prayers and God, some of us are at that point where we're frustrated. Maybe we've walked away from the house. But Jesus, I pray that you would remind us that you're still there. And we need not give up. Give us the tenacity that we need to keep on praying, Lord Jesus. Give us everything we need by your Holy Spirit to touch heaven, to see you see that loved one saved, to watch you do that miracle in that life, to touch homes and schools and students and friends and family members. God, you could do it all. And so, so we bring these burdens to you. So hear the prayers of your people today before we leave. In Jesus' name. And we all said amen. If you need to pray, we do so right now. If God's released you, you can consider yourself dismissed to fellowship in the lobby. Let's make this place a place of prayer. This is a house of worship. This is a place of